Right here, right here. Let's see it, let's see it. Oh, there he goes. You got it, you got it. You get him? I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, right. Yes, yes. Whoa, 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 hold on. Let's try to get on the net. The coastline of Australia varies greatly from region to region, and along the Sunshine Coast, you will find a plethora of rich, mangrove-lined inlets known as estuaries. An estuary is a partially enclosed body of brackish water, which means that it is comprised from both a fresh and saltwater source. These ecosystems are influenced by the rising and falling of the tide, and are considered to be one of the most biodiverse natural habitats in the world. Today we are exploring near the town of Mullaney. This beautiful stretch of rolling hills and coastal land is the perfect backdrop for an episode of Beyond the Tide. All right, guys. Well, this is going to be our first Beyond the Tide episode here in Australia, and our target species is the stingray. As you can see right here, I have a big, sturdy net. I'm gonna need this if I wanna catch one of these creatures and get it up close for the cameras. We're at low tide right now, so there's a good chance we're gonna come across one. Now, I'll be looking for shadows in the water, and I want you guys to do the exact same thing. If you see something moving, let me know, and we're gonna hopefully be able to catch it. Quick question. Yeah. I've heard that uh, walking in water like this is kind of dangerous when there's stingrays around. How do you do that? Ah, uh, yes. The key movement today is going to be shuffling our feet. So watch this. You wanna kind of be moving like this. And the reason for that is that the rays will oftentimes bury themselves down in the sandy silt. You don't wanna step straight down on top of one of those barbs. It will go right through your foot. So by shuffling your feet, if you kick a ray, you'll scare it and it will take off and you'll avoid getting stung. All right guys, so everybody just drag your feet today when we're walking. Sound good? Sounds good to me. All right, let's head this direction. Going with the wind. Brackish water tends to be incredibly cloudy as tidal movement causes sediment on the estuary basin to be in constant turmoil. This environmental challenge made spotting animals incredibly difficult. Water's actually a little clearer in this area. You can see the wind has actually kind of died down. We've got a little bit more plant cover that's blocking the wind. Let's slowly venture out into this direction. Let me lead. I'll let you know if I see anything. And remember, continue to drag your feet because if I walk past something and don't disturb it, there's a chance that you could step right on top of one of those barbs. So drag those feet, guys. As we continued inward toward an exposed sandbar, the tides of luck began to turn. And there before us, the shadow of a stingray began to materialize beneath the surface. Got it? I do not. Oh. Oh. Shoot. That was close. That was close, though. I think I got just on top of it. I could feel it pulling. Actually, so big it might not fit in the net. But that was our good first shot at it. We yeah. definitely are seeing rays now. It's just a matter of actually being able to scoop one up in the net. And I think that's the play. Once I get close to it and it starts to move, I need to sort of explode into action and try to scoop it. And what I'm trying to do is get the net in front of its nose and then pull backwards. Okay, well, we're getting close. All right, good first shot. Keep looking. Right here, right here. Let's see it, let's see it. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's right here. He's right here in front of me. He's right here. Dude, he's right here. Look at him, look at him. There you go, he's looking. See his weight, see his weight? Yeah. Put these sunglasses on. Put these sunglasses on. You need to see him. Put that on. He's right here. Right there, right there, right there, in front of him. In front of him, you got it, you got it. He's turning back here, ready? Don't let him get out, sit to the open. Did you get him? I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, right. Yes. Yes! Whoa, 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 hold on, let's try to get on the net. Woo! All right! Good spotting, guys! Amari handing off his uh, 
polarizing sunglasses to me right in the middle of that changed the game immediately. And I was able to see it so much better. Look at the spots, that's awesome. All right guys, we have to be really careful here. I'm trying to determine where its barb is. I see it right on the back of the tail there. Okay, it appears that this is a mask ray. Now let me do this. You see those eyes up front there? Wow, so bizarre looking. All right guys, so that we can get this ray up close for the cameras, it's gonna be very hard for me to handle this. Also dangerous because of the venomous barb, but there's a little pocket of water up here. Let's place it in that pocket and we'll be able to observe it in the water and in a situation that we can keep control. Are you ready? Yep. yep. All right, I'm gonna quickly move it up here. All right, let's get it into this pocket of water here. Let me check the temperature first. Yeah, this is plenty cool, this is perfect. Okay, I'm gonna let it gently sorta of swim out here. That's a great ray, man. It really is. Look at the eyeballs. Look just like the eyes of a crocodile positioned on top of its head there. Now some species of rays have very wide set eyes and they don't have the best eyesight. And similar to sharks, they have sensory organs on the front of their noses that allow them to sense for their prey. Now this species, I can tell you this much, I actually have my finger in its mouth right now. It doesn't have teeth. It just has these flat plates that it uses to grab onto its food and grind it up. Now some species of rays do in fact have teeth. You can see I'm constantly trying to move here because it is capable of spinning its tail around and what I don't want to take is a sting from that barbed tail. Let me turn it like this. And while I'm talking about what it eats, it eats small crustaceans, little fish, mollusks. They're pretty opportunistic. Um, and some array of this size would even take something like a small octopus. But I know what you guys are really interested in is that tail. And look at that, this one has two venomous spines. Those are modified dermal dendrites. Basically like scales growing out of this creature's body. And it does have a very narrow row of them down the middle of the spine. And there at the tail, double stinger. Now that stinger, is laced with venom. And similar to a lionfish, they actually have a membrane-like sheath over the stinger, and when it inserts into something that's trying to attack it, that sheath sort of peels away, and the venom is then leaked into whatever it is that's being stung. Now, they do not use their stingers at all for catching their food. They're strictly used as a defense mechanism. And as you can see, it's kind of flicking its tail around there, just trying to keep my fingers away from that tail. Now, some ray species have two stingers like this one. Many only have a single stinger and some species stingers can grow up to a foot in length. I'll tell you what you don't want to happen, a foot long stinger going through your arm. Let me see if I can just slowly lift you up there a little bit, buddy. Now the gills of this creature are actually on the underside of its body. And what I'm gonna do now is try to lift it up by just holding on to the base of the tail. Nope, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that because the tail of this species is short. Let me give that one more try though. I can hold on to these air holes and the back of its tail like this, trying not to take a sting. This doesn't hurt it in any way whatsoever. Look at the underside there and see if you can see those gills. Can you see the gills under there? Hold it there. You can see the mouth working too. There you go, buddy. And that's about as much as I want to try to actually handle this animal. And as you can see, it's breathing by passing water over its gills. And you see these two air vents right here? The water comes in through the mouth, past the gills, and then out through these little orifices right there. Similar to an octopus, the way that an octopus can shoot water out of those little valves on the side of its body, this guy's also capable of shooting water off to the sides. So he's breathing just fine right now. Oh yeah, he's completely fine. And like I said, I wanna to try to handle it as little as possible. Now because we know that rays are related to sharks, you may be asking yourself, well coyote, does its skin feel just like a shark? Is it scratchy like sandpaper? I honestly thought that this ray would be scratchy, but it's not. It's incredibly smooth and has a gelatinous membrane covering its skin. Feels just like a frog or a salamander. Yeah, go ahead, touch it real gently there. Let me just kind of keep it positioned down. Oh wow. How about that, right? It does feel like an amphibian. And look at the coloration. Almost looks like the coloration of the smoky jungle frog. 
Actually, you know what it reminds me of? What's that? Green sea turtle. Little bit? Well, and again, that camouflage is so incredibly crucial for this animal's survival. Look at this substrate, right? All these little snails in this sand. So this creature laying on the basin of the river stays perfectly hidden. Now, the way that they hunt is using something called defensive mimicry, right? That works in two ways. Partially to hide them from predators, but also to keep them hidden for anything that wanders into their territory. So something wanders close, it can lunge forward and grab onto it and eat it. Uh, that's obviously also considered ambush predatory, where it stays in one spot and waits for its food to come to it. Okay, I'm just lifting up just a little bit. And look at the unique design of this animal's body. You see that? Look at that. You don't realize that rays have fins on the back. No, they do, and that helps to control the direction in which they move. Now, there are over 200 species of rays worldwide, and they come in so many different unique shapes and sizes. And for a mask ray, this is about average size, maybe even considered large for this species. But some species, like the manta ray, can grow to be massive in length, from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other, close to 15 feet in length. Wow. All right, he's getting close to wanting to head back off into the river. But let's talk about that barb one more time. Now, if you are stung by a stingray, fear not, it is not going to kill you. The venom is just extremely painful. And the way to actually stop that venom from hurting is to submerge the stung appendage of your body in pretty hot water, pretty much as hot as you can stand. Very similar to the sting of a lionfish. And one thing that you do need to be wary of though is that that barb has the potential of breaking off in the wound. So you wanna make sure you seek medical attention and get that looked at. All right guys, I think at this point, this ray is ready to head back off into the river. But how cool was this? Coming out here into the Australian estuaries and finally catching and getting up close for the cameras, a stingray. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, let's get this guy back into the river. Stingrays are naturally docile and non-threatening toward humans. However, they have the potential to be dangerous if provoked. When walking in an area where these marine creatures may be present, it's advised to cautiously drag your feet through the sand and sediment. This tactic decreases the chances of accidentally stepping on a resting stingray, and in turn, lessens your odds of ever feeling the wrath from that venomous stinger. All right, and there he goes. Man, that was awesome. Man, you caught one. That took some effort though, didn't it? Yeah, man, that was a perfect size ray though. Yeah, anything bigger than that, it wasn't gonna fit in the net, so. All right, guys, our first official Stingray episode is in the books. If you thought the Stingray was a fascinating creature, make sure to go back and watch the episode where I was slimed by a giant black sea slug. Yuck. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next low tide adventure.